Hi guys, so let's now take a look at different shapes of the production possibility curves. So, so far we've only considered the one that bows out and that increasing opportunity cost that we saw on that diagram. But it's important to understand that these PPCs can be seen in different shapes. For instance, this straight line PPC you'll see again in international economics and your year 13 work when it comes to comparative advantage. Okay, moreover, we can also see this inverted uh, PPC clearly here as well. So let's take a look firstly at our straight line PPC. Uh, now, this really highlights a constant opportunity cost. We can see food and clothing on our axes, and as we actually move from point A through to point B, we give up 10 units of food, uh, but we gain 20 units of clothing. Uh, meanwhile, as we then transition from point C, down to point D, again, we give up 10 units of food and gain 20 units of clothing. So it really does show a constant opportunity cost that if you move to A, uh, from A to B, or from C to D, you see the same opportunity cost throughout. Moreover, this really emphasizes the notion of perfect factor mobility, the fact that land, labor, capital can all be used equally well to produce food or to produce clothing. Now, this might be stretching uh, the realms of imagination a little bit too far to assume that, but that is, of course, one of the key assumptions on David Ricardo's theory of comparative advantage and that perfect factor mobility that we see here, okay? Um, but in truth, of course, capital goods, machinery, laborers, they will develop different skills and therefore they will not equally be as able to produce food and clothing. Okay, uh, so this inverted PPC, this, this is really useful in terms of actually understanding uh, the decreasing opportunity cost that we see. So moving from point A to B, we give up 20 units of food and we gain just one unit of clothing. Okay, so there's an enormous opportunity cost in moving from A to B. Meanwhile, if we move from point C to point D, we can see we give up two units of food, but we gain 20 extra units of clothing. So that's really, really quite significant there. Uh, so as a consequence of this, we really see uh, the notion of decreasing opportunity cost and the fact that moving from C to D, you only have to give up two units of food to gain 20 units of clothing. Uh, what we also see here is that an economy is likely to choose between one of these different specialisms, uh, whether it chooses to actually uh, focus on producing food or whether it is likely to choose uh, clothing. Depends really where their advantages lie, uh, but choosing to do one or the other allows specialisation to be developed. That is, that your factors of production uh, become specialised in producing either food or um, clothing and as such that enables you to develop very very large economies of scale by employing specialist workers by uh, employing specialist machinery to really boost productivity and as such as soon as you actually start moving resources away then it will actually have a big impact upon your level of production there okay so if you choose to move from D to C of course then you are foregoing quite a substantial amount of uh, production of clothing just to gain two extra units of food. Okay, great stuff guys. Really important you get to grips with just understanding those three different types of PPC. So have a look back over them, test yourselves. Thanks for joining me.